um, I'd like to welcome everybody that's watching, whether you're on the web page, on YouTube, or live with us here on Zoom. Uh, my name is Pauline Cordner, and I'm a storyteller from the northeast of Scotland. Um, I come from a background of fishermen and farmers and toonsers, basically, and I'd like to do some Scottish stories for you today and uh, may maybe a couple of songs if, if my voice keeps up to it. Um, I'd like to say uh, for anybody that's joining us here on the World Storytelling Cafe for the first time that in below everybody's videos and I encourage you to go and watch all the different storytellers you'll find a hat and the hat is PayPal um, so please uh, put whatever you can into the hat storytellers aren't earning at the moment and um, every little bit of money um, is very much appreciated and any money that you raise today is going straight to the cafe clock tellers. My accent makes that very difficult to say. <laughs> cafe clock tellers. Never ask a Scottish person to say curly whirly. It's very difficult. So um, I think I'll crack off with a, a story from the northeast of Scotland from Des, which is about 30 miles west of Aberdeen. Um, I got this from Stanley Robertson. He was our local traveller, storyteller, ballad singer, and he was half a generous with all his stories. One day um, we went up um, on a long drive. He, he took a bunch of people up what's called the Old Road um, of a village called Lumfannon. And on the way there, um, he said, oh, Lassie, pull in here, pull in, and uh, there's something I'm going to show you. And I'll tell you at the end uh, what, what it was that I saw. So a long, long time ago, 120 years or so, actually, probably not that old a story in, in terms of some of the ones he taught. There was a young laddie whose name was Jack. Now, Jack was a traveler and his folks traveled all around the Northeast. They would go down south to Tayside to the berries. They would be picking the, the tatties, the potatoes in autumn time, at harvest time, and summer they would work the flax. And that was when they came up to the Northeast of Scotland. Now, Jack's family had pitched their camp nay far from Des. Now, Des, if you were to go there, you know, having heard me tell the story, you wouldn't have found much. There's an abandoned railway station and a couple of cottages. But back then, round about there was where the travellers used to spend a lot of the summer camping. And Jack was about 17 or 18 years old and he was an half a talented lad. He would turn his hand to anything. And a day he'd gone into Bankery, which is one of the nearby towns, and he'd been buying a bit and selling a bit. And he saw this gadget who'd just driven into town on one of the very early motor cars and the poor lad was having problems starting it up it was one of these ones where you had to turn a crank at the front well Jack was a fine lad so he went over and he said to the boy do not worry I'll hear your motor started in no time of all and he started turning it and cranking it and that was it well he got chatting to this gadget and the man well, he, he had what you would call in the northeast of Scotland a plum in his moo. He was very posh. Oh, young man, he said, thank you so much. I'm going off, I'm going off um, towards, towards Ballater to do some hunting and, and some fishing, you see, with some friends, and it would be awfully rude if I was late. Oh, says Jack, oh, you'll hear a lovely time. The fishing up there is wonderful. And when you see the mountain stag in the morning, it'll fair make your heart beat. And he said to the man, what, what clothing have you got? Well, uh, one, one has one's fine clothes. Jack said, tell me something. Have you got clothes for hunting? Because out there back then, everybody wore these sort of short trousers plus fours. And the man said, oh goodness, no, where would I get a pair? And Jack said, well, I don't know, but you know, they're all the rage. And the posh man, he said to him, if you can get me a pair, I'll be back in two days time and I'll give you a lot of money. And off the man went in his newly started motor car. Well, 
Jack had a look round some of the second-hand clothes shops and in there he found this great pair of tweed trousers and like I said, Jack was a dab hand at Athen and he walked all the way back to Des, 10 miles or so, got to the camp and he got out his mother's sewing kit and he stitched and he sewed and he soon had this bra pair of trousers into a pair of plus fours that any tailor would be proud of. Time passed. A couple of days later, he went back to Bankery and he had a great time looking around the stalls at the market, round the park, enjoying the bonny lasses. And eventually he saw his friend and the man gave him a fair amount of money, more than Jack had had in a long time. So he slipped it into his pooch and just as he was going to leave Bankery to take the money off to his mother, he thought to himself, he's given me more than they were worth. I'm going to go and buy a couple of bottles of beer and a macaroni cheese pie. Okay, they're more of a recent thing. And a mince pie to taste my moo and I'll hear them on the way home. And it was a beautiful, beautiful summer's day. And it was only about three o'clock in the afternoon when he got to Des. Now, if you were to go there, you'll find a wee lay-by. And if you go down the bank a bit, there's now some wooden stairs that are ancient, half rotting. You've got to hold on to a banister. You go down, you tiptoe across some stones and you find a couple of big flat rocks at the bottom of a beautiful waterfall. And there Jack took off his boots, he put his feet into the water, he opened up the first bottle of beer and had a wee drink. Oh, it was fine. And he ate the mince pie. And he thought, I've still got time to get home. Well, it's uh, middle of summer. It doesn't get dark until about 11, half past 11 at night up here. So he opened up the second bottle of, bottle of beer. And then it was so hot and so nice. He thought, he thought he would have a wee snooze, and snooze he did. But when he woke up, it was a lot colder. And he looked around him, and he found that he couldn't see a thing. Not because it was dark, but because this heavy mist had come down. It was so thick, it was such a stir, he couldn't see his hand in front of his face. And he picked up those bottles, shoved them into his bag, and his leftover macaroni pie, and he felt his way splooshing across the river until he finally got to the banister along the bank, and he felt his way up those stairs, and he thought, I have to go home tonight, otherwise my mother is going to be feared for me, she's going to be worried about me. And he walked and he walked, and it's only a few steps from the end of that stairs over to the road, but wherever he walked, he couldn't find the road. He, he was completely lost in the forest. He knew he should have come to it, but he just thought the best thing to do would be to feel his way, feel his way. But he knew that if he went too far, there's a sharp drop, a cliff, and he could fall to his death. So he thought to himself, the best thing that I can do is just sit down here make myself warm and comfortable up against this tree and I'll go home lifted or in the morning if it ever comes first. Well he fell asleep again the beer had something to do with that and when he woke again it was dark and it was cold and he could feel the dampness of the mist around him and this time he couldn't see because it was so dark and he thought he would just wait it out until morning, but in the distance, just over the way, he could see a light moving towards him. And at first he thought, could this be one of the fairy folk? What could this be coming towards me? But it wasn't flickering the way that the will-o'-the-wisps do. It was like a lantern. And soon the glow of the lantern came closer and closer. It could only have been, what, 20 feet away? And whoever was holding the lantern lifted it up 
And there was this beautiful little girl. She would have been about eight or nine years old, blonde hair, blue eyes, and she was smiling and she said, who's there? Who is it? And Jack cried out, I'm lost, I'm lost. Where am I? And she said, you're at death. He said, I got lost in the fog and I need to find my way home. I'm just gonna wait it out till morning. And the young lassie said, oh, my parents said that they heard someone. And Jack thought, oh, I, have I been snoring that loud? They told me to come and get you. Come with me, she said, come on. And Jack was so grateful that he would be able to spend the night in a warm house with kind people that he started getting to his feet. He'd only walked about two feet when he heard the snapping of a branch behind him. And he whipped round and he looked into another lantern. But this time, the person holding the lantern wasn't a beautiful young girl. It was a haggard, old, ugly woman with hooked nose, with teeth missing, and with curled, crunchy gray hair around her face. And she said, Jack, stop. Jack said, what do you want, woman? And she said, my name is Wed Jenny. I am the good witch of these forests. And that is a water witch. She's one of the water spirits. If you follow her, you will go to your death. And Dak Shack said, oh, oh, come on, come on. She's going to give me a nice place to sleep tonight. Aye, said the old woman. It'll be your eternal rest. Come with me. Jack looked over to the bonny young lassie and she was going, no, Jack, no. She's a horrible old witch. She means you harm. She is the witch. Come with me. Come with me. And he looked from the rosy cheeked, blonde haired, blue eyed girl who was beckoning. And he looked at the old woman. There was something about the way that the old woman was looking at him. He saw this look in her eyes and it looked like true concern. And he looked at the girl and he looked at the old woman and he said, I'm not going anywhere tonight. There was an old tree that he had bumped up against and he could feel that it had fallen many years ago. And he lay up against it, almost half along it. And even though the young girl continued to beckon to him and the old woman encouraged him, ignore her, stay where you are, Jack wouldn't move. Soon he fell asleep. And in the morning, when he woke up, he found that the tree he was lying up against there was one which had fallen across the deep gorge that the water comes down before it goes to the waterfall. If he had taken one step further in that direction, he would have plummeted to his death. The fog had lifted and Jack pulled his coat about him it was still calm, even in a summer's morning in Scotland, and he's made his way back to the camp. Some of the women were already starting to stir. Some of the bairns had gone to get water. The fire was being stoked up, and there was a nice pot of slab getting built. And his granny came rushing out to him, and she said, Jack, Jack, where have you been? He said, I got lost in the fog last night. What fog? There was no fog last night of ah. And she sat him down and made him tell her his tale. And he said, Wid Jenny, you met Wid Jenny? Aye, for she was your grandmother, your great great grandmother. She was fair looking out for you. And that was the story of Wid Jenny and the Water Witch. Um, and where Stanley had taken me, um, he beckoned me down this wee path. And here was this tree, half rotten, leaning all the way across. And he pointed to the very spot where Wid Jenny had um, stood. And he pointed to the spot across the river where uh, the water witch had beckoned to him. And um, according to Stanley, that's a true story. But then all of his stories were true stories. So there you go. I hope you like that one. Um, Thank you. Oh, thanks. I can see folk. <laughs> Hi, John. John's made Hi. It.
<coughs> Juliana might be joining us. Say hello yes, to I'm Juliana here. if she's there. Oh, Hi, Juliana. Thanks for the story. I loved it. Heaps of folk. Brilliant. Well, um, I thought um, I thought I would break it up with a wee song. Um, in the northeast of Scotland, I started telling stories in the Iron Age, by which I don't mean 2,000 years ago. I used to volunteer at a place called Archeolink, where I told Iron Age stories. And then I discovered the Grampian storytellers. And once you got there, they kind of sucked you in and said, now that you tell stories, you've got to sing songs. And I was like, oh, I no." but apparently you do. So um, where we are, I mentioned the farming <laughs> up here, um, great, great farming lands. Um, and about 200 years ago, we had a Bothy system where farmers would own huge areas of land. They were very rich and they would hire people at the hiring fairs every term. Now a term could be half a year or it could be a full year. And um, the men tended to work until they could afford to go up, go up the ladder. Maybe they would start off as the Aura Loon. Aura means odd, Loon means boy. So they were the boy that did all the odd jobs. And then you'd move up to be a plumeman, um, being in charge of the plough. Probably the top job was being the, the horseman. And oh, there's a whole heap of other stories related to the horseman's tradition and the secret society and the, the horseman's word. <laughs> but um, the way that the lads communicated to each other uh, who was a good person to go and work for or a bad person was that there was lots of songs that would be written. This was their, their entertainment in the evening. They lived in bothies or chalmers. Chalmers were bedrooms as part of the farm. Bothies were separate buildings with a wash house um, and a lot and uh, just the room where they lived and ate and um, they would be playing the fiddle, they'd be playing the drums and they would write songs about their situation. So there are songs about great farming teams. There are songs about really bad farmers, farmers that are no use at all. Really good farmers. Songs about the farmer's daughter who was affabony, broken hearts and there's always one about a drunken pig. Um, I think I was in two minds which one to do today. Um, there's, I think I'm going to do the catchy one, the famous one, um, and maybe at some time in the future I'll do another song which is all about, um, because they used to hire girls as well, they would be milk milkmaids or they would be kitschy dames, girls that worked in the kitchens or in the dairies. And the other song is about a woman who, um, goes to incredible lengths to stop these girls having boyfriends. Incredible lengths. She doesn't trust them. But I'll do the traditional one. It's called the Barren Yards of Delgate. Uh, Delgate is about 50 miles from me. And um, the boy that sing sings it is fairly full of himself. And it goes like this. There's a chorus you can join in. You don't need to know the words. It's one of these nonsense choruses. Okay. <clears throat> As I get in by Tara Merkit, Tara Merkit for to be, I'm a ten we a fair merchil, the bar in yards of Delgate, Lent and Addy to Renadi, Lent and Addy to Rene, Lent and Loud and Loud and Loud in the bar in yards of Delgate. He promised me the twa best pair you've ever set your in upon. But far I got to the barren yards, there was nothing there but skin and bone. Learn to naddy to the naddy, learn to naddy to the nay, learn to loud and loud and loud in the barren yards, a delgate. <laughs> the old black horse sat on his rump, the old grey mare sat on her wine, but for all that I would whop. And crack, they wouldn't rise at yoke and time. Learn to naddy to the naddy, learn to naddy to the nay, learn to loud and loud and loud in the bar and yards at Elgate. New make my efforts and marks my bros, but had a new week, I'd be easy. 
fast a moat and sign a knot, and nothing but a gilt for free. Lent and addy to the naddy, Lent and addy to the nay, Lent and flower and loud and loud and the bar and yards a jalket tape, and I be to the kirk on Sunday. Money's a bonny lass I see, sitting by their feathered sides and winking out the heels at me. Lend to Naddy to the Naddy, Lend to Naddy to the Nay, Lend and loud and loud and loud in the bar and yards a gal her tea. Now I can fecht and no be broke, I can fecht and no be slain. I can kiss another man's lass and still be welcome to my end. Lend to Naddy to the Naddy, Lend to Naddy to the Nay. Lind and loud and loud and loud in the bar and yards a delgate. My cannel knew it is brunted. The snotters fairly on the wane. So fare ye will ye barren yards. You'll never catch me here again. Lent and addy to the naddy, lend and addy to the nay, lend and loud and loud and loud in the bar and go to tell the day. Lend and addy to the naddy, lend and addy to the nay, lend and loud and loud and loud in the bar and go to tell the day. Hope you like that one. There, there's some brilliant words in that. <laughs> we need um, translation. We need like translation. <laughs> yeah, you need a translation. So we yeah, we need uh, translation. <laughs> he went to the. He was promised two good horses, and um, when he got there, there were nothing but skin and bone. Um, the old black horse sat on her bottom and wouldn't move. The old grey mare lay down on her stomach and just looked at him. And they wouldn't wake when it was time to wake in the morning. Now, Meg McPherson, she's the kitchy dame. She works in the kitchen. She makes his bros. Now, bros are a sort of, uh, as it's a kind of porridge, but with whiskey in to get you a good start in the morning. And her whiskey is full of lumps. And there's hardly any, uh, sorry, her porridge is full of lumps and there's no whiskey in it. Not very good. Um, and he goes to the church on Sunday and he sees the bonny girls sitting next to their fathers and he winks at them. Um, and he can drink and not get drunk. He can fight and win. And all, he's so handsome that all the girls love him. Um, now, my favorite bit, my candle knew is fair brunt. My, it's, my candle has come to the end. The snotter's fairly on the way and it's con Kids love this. It's comparing the drips on a candle to bogies, to boogers, and if there's any Americans. Um, and at the he ends the song saying he's not coming back. He's he's moving on to another place. So uh, that's one of my favourites. Now, um, there's somebody I've got to introduce you to. She's been quite quiet, um, which is nice. She's not normally quiet. Um, what? I know. No, I said. I said you could say hello. Well, there's no point in complaining to me. Right. Are you going to be in your best behaviour? Right. Okay. Come on then. Hello there! <laughs> 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 at me. Yeah, that's because you're funny. This, this is my friend Fizzy. Um, right. Remember what we said about not swearing? Okay, no drinking. You can have some of your iron brew if you want. Uh, now, um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with fairies. Uh, I, I have been told that there's an equivalent of fairies in every culture. Um, Scottish fairies are particularly... Um, consternatious. Yeah, consternatious. That means... Um, Grumpy and up to no good? Aye. That's pretty much you, isn't it? Yes. And um, Fizzy comes to festivals and schools and care homes. They love her in care homes. Basically, I'm going to tell another story. There's one that you like about what you like to eat, don't you? 
Um, but we're not doing that one. We're doing one about a lady called Mary. And Mary, uh, this story actually comes from Durris, which I can more or less see from my house on a particularly clear day. Um, at the moment, it's got a, a 5G mast on it, still surviving. <laughs> um, but back in the day, it's where the fairies lived. And Mary lived in the village of Durris, and she was a very good baker. In fact, she was famous for miles around for her baking. And the fairies just love cakes. Yeah, the fairies love cakes. So one day, um, at the request of the Queen of the Fairies, they went up, 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 out of Fairyland, down the hill to Mary's house, grabbed hold of her, carried her up the hill, down, down, down into Fairyland. And she was plunked in front of the Fairy Queen, who said, that's, that's your cue. Oh. Hello, I am the Queen of the Fairies, and you have been brought here to <coughs> bake cake. So she said, well, I don't want to be brought here to bake cake. Can, can you set me free? I've got a <coughs> husband, a daughter, little baby. I've got a, I've got a dog and I've got a cat. What, the, what will they do without me? The, the queen of the fairies wasn't having it. And she said, no, no, you're not getting set free. You're staying here. <laughs> so Mary knew she had to use her cunning to escape. So she said to the, the queen of the fairies, what kind of cake would you like? Now, is there anybody out there would like to volunteer a type of cake that they might like? I'd like, I'd like a, wa a coffee and walnut. Oh, coffee and walnut. Oh, distinguished taste down there, John Rowe. Well done. <laughs> so, can I get, can I get a Dundee cake? Dundee cake from Scotland, is that Dundee possible? Cake. Right, we'll, we'll kind of mix them together then. Okay. Right? So we're having a coffee and walnut Dundee cake. Is that all right? Yes. So, Mary said, right, okay, so it's going to be a coffee walnut dundee cake. Right, okay. Um, can you bring me a bowl and a spoon? And the Queen of the Fairies said, this is fairyland. We don't have bowls and spoons. And she said, well, I can't make a cake without bowls and spoons. I'll go and get one. And the Queen of the Fairies said, did you think I was born yesterday? If I let you go, you'll never come back. Oh, okay, so they'd figured that out. She said, I will send my fairy minions to go and get the cake, ingredients and the bowl and the spoon. So the fairy minions went up, 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 out of fairyland, down the hill into Mary's house and they came back with the bowl and the spoon, which they put in front of Mary. Now, we need some ingredients. What, what's going into this uh, coffee and walnut and Dundee cake? What, what do you need to make a cake? I'm not a baker, I don't know these things. Eggs. Eggs, okay, we're, eggs, what else? Flour? Flour. Dried Flour fruit. Butter. Lots of dried fruit. <laughs> Lots of fruit. Love. Right, okay. Well, Glass egg cherries. <laughs> Oh, John's often one. You can tell he has. <laughs> you did your click and collect for as does not work? No. Right. No, okay. No. Right. So uh, Mary uh, said. Uh, <laughs> so Mary said to the Queen of the Fairies, "Right, can you bring me some flour, some butter, and some eggs?" And the Queen of the Fairies said, "This." Is fairyland. We do not have butter, flour, and eggs. She said, "Well, that's okay. I'll I'll go up and get some." And the queen of the fairies said, "Do you think I was born yesterday? If I let you go, you will not come back." Fairy minions. So the fairy minions all got up and they were like, "What now? You go and get butter, milk, and eggs. No butter, flour, and eggs. Right. Keep me straight." So they went up, up, up out of Fairyland, down the hill, into Mary's house, and they got the butter, the flour, and the eggs. They carried it all the way back, and they plunked it at Mary's feet. And she said, great, right, okay. So what else did we need? We needed John's wanting glassy cherries. He's wanting coffee. Oh, you like coffee, don't you? Mm. Yeah, it's easy telling. She has a lot of coffee. And, oh, walnuts, walnuts. So Mary said, right, can you bring me some walnuts? 
and some coffee and some glassy cherries. And the Queen of the Fairies said, This is Fairyland. We don't have those things here. And, and Mary said, It's okay. I'll go and get them. And the Queen of the Fairies said, Do you think I was born yesterday? If I let you go, yeah, when I come back. I'll get my fairy minions to do it. So the fairy minions went up, up, up out of fairyland. They were getting quite tired by this point. Down the hill to Mary's house and they got the walnuts, the glassy cherries and the coffee. Back up the hill, down, down, down into fairyland. Getting quite dizzy there. And they put the ingredients at Mary's feet. Right, what are we missing? What have we not got yet? What's going to make it sweet? Sugar. 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 And, and dry okay. fruit. Okay. The thing... <laughs> Maple syrup. Extra sugar. <laughs> maple, oh, oh, maple syrup. Yeah. See, we should do the story with grown ups more often. You get better ingredients. Okay. So, <laughs> sugar, maple syrup, something liquidy that comes out of a cow that's not piddle. Milk. It's white. Milk. Milk. Right. So, she said to the Queen of the Fairies, I need milk, no. maple sugar, sugar, no, maple syrup, and mm. sugar. And the Queen of the Fairies, quite predictably, said, This is Fairyland. We don't have those things. And she said, Well, that's fine. I'll, I'll go and get them. Do you think I was born yesterday? If I go and let you get those things, you won't come back, Fairy Minions. And the Fairy Minions, well, they were conned by this point. And they said, What? But she was the queen, and when the queen says that you've got to go and get maple syrup, sugar, and milk, you've got no. to do it. So they went up, 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 out of the land, down the hill, into Mary's house. They got the milk, the sugar, the maple syrup, up, up, up the hill, down, 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 into fairy land, dropped it at Mary's feet, and Mary said, right, we've got all the ingredients. And the fairies said, oh, thank goodness. And she started to mix and she got all the ingredients into the bowl and she's stirring and she's stirring and she's stirring. And she said, this is just me, right, this? And the Queen of the Fairies was confused. You've got all the ingredients, what's wrong? Well, normally when I bake my cakes, I've got my dog with me and he lies at my feet. And when he lies at my feet, he wags his tail because he's a happy dog and he beats his leg against my leg. He beats his tail against my leg. And that helps me get the right rhythm when I'm stirring the ingredients in the bowl. I can't make cakes unless I've got my dog. What? I need my dog. I, I can go and get him if you want. And the Queen of the Fairies said, Do you think I was born yesterday? Fairy minions, and the fairy minions were summoned once again up, up, out, out of fairyland, you know how it goes, down the hill, grab the dog, who wasn't very happy about it, up, up, up the hill, down, down, down into fairyland, dogs lying at Mary's feet. Right, says Mary, okay, let's get going, and she starts stirring it. Now, that was a problem. What? said the queen of the fairies. Dog's not happy. Why not? Well, you know what? I'm missing my cat, and so is the dog. The cat lies next to the dog, the cat purrs. When the cat purrs, that's what makes the dog wag his tail, which makes him bang his tail against my leg, and I won't be able to get the rhythm right, and the cake, fake cake can't be cooked. So I'll go and get my cat, okay? No, you won't, says the queen of the fairies. Fairy minions! Fairy minions are, they're about to swing for Mary. They're, they're fed up of this, but up, 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 out of fairyland, down the hill, into Mary's house to get the cat who's spitting and scratching them all over. Back up the hill, down into fairyland, cat starts purring, dog starts wagging its tail, Mary starts mixing. And the queen of the fairies is licking her lips because she's dreaming about this coffee and walnut Dundee cake. No, she says, I, I, I just can't do this. And by this point, the Queen of the Fairies is incandescent with rage. You always look angry, Fizzy. Ah, she said, what now? She said, my baby needs feeding. How, how, can I, how can I make a cake when my baby's going to go hungry? So 
the Queen of the Fairies said, right, what do you want me to do about it? I'll go and get my baby, it's fine. I'll go and get, do you think it was born yesterday? You won't come back, fairy minions. The fairy minions up, up, up at the fairy land down the hill, they come back with the baby, the baby gets fed, everyone's happy. And then the baby starts gurgling and the Queen of the Fairies, she's, you know how fairies are quite intrigued with babies. The fairies kind of in there looking at the baby and uh, the Queen of the Fairies says, why is it making that noise? Oh, she, she needs our daddy, she misses our daddy. Oh, that's it. Oh, she says, I can't make a cake unless our daddy's here. Queen of the Fairies cuts to the chase. Fairy minions, she says, get the father. The fairy minions go up, 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 out of fairyland, down the hill. Now, daddy has fallen asleep in his armchair. Um, completely oblivious to the fact that his house is empty of his wife, the dog, the cat, and more importantly, the baby. Um, so the fairy minions have to humph the armchair and the dad over the gate and up the path and um, up the hill, down, down, down into fairyland, and finally the husband's there. Mary starts mixing the cake. Right, she says. <clears throat> she gives the husband a kick. And he makes exactly that noise. <clears throat> what, what, what is it? What, what, what? And he looks around and they're in this cavern surrounded by fairies. So he looks at Mary and Mary says, we've been kidnapped by the fairies. I figured that, he says, right, here's the plan. In a minute, you're gonna kick the dog. I'm not gonna kick the dog. He says, oh, you are, not hard, just enough to make it bark. And then the cat, is going to get woken up by the dog barking and it's going to meow, right? And then that's going to wake the baby who's going to scream. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is where my maths comes into play. If you have a name that starts with the letter A to the letter J in the alphabet, I want you to be dogs, okay? Can we all have a rehearsal woof? If your name starts with A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, that'll do. Ready, steady, go! Brilliant, right, stop, stop, right, good. Okay, <laughs> if the name is between K and R, so it's K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, then you're going to be the cats. Can anyone be cats? Ready, steady, go on you Hang on, I think I think we've got one person whose name starts with Z. Oh no, we have, we've got a, 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 we've got yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so here yeah. Yeah. the baby. <laughs> Unless there's anybody else that fancies being a baby. <laughs> Okay, I want to have a baby rehearsal on the count of three, one, two, three. Ah! Can we have a baby? <laughs> Perfect, right. So when I say your character, you start making the noise, okay? So, but, but not so loudly, you can't hear me. So then... The, king of the, the queen of the fairies is quite happy. She's getting her cake made. And Mary says to her husband, kick the dog. And the dog starts to bark. <laughs> and that wakes up. And the cat starts to meow. So the dogs are barking. And the cat starts to meow. And the baby wakes up. And the baby starts to scream. And there's your oven. Oh. Silence! Oh, brilliant! <laughs> Fabulous! Oh, you are better than a whole primary school. That was amazing. So, at the height of the noise, in case you didn't hear that, Mary shouts out, Where's your oven? And the Queen of the Fairies says, We don't have an Never. oven! <laughs> and the fairy minions say, We're not grabbing an oven! And so Mary says, how about I take my dog, my cat, my husband and my baby and we go and cook the cakes at home and the Queen of the Fairies says, get out of here and never come back again. 
<laughs> so Mary escaped with her family and her pets and she went all the way home and she did a clever thing. She put a horseshoe above the door. Now, the reason she did that is that fairies are terrified of iron. I hate ironing. And she also put some rowan wood above the door. Fairies also hate rowan wood so that they could never come in ever again. But because Mary is such a kind person, she made tiny, tiny little versions of the coffee and walnut Dundee cake in little, little ones. And every time that she makes those cakes, she puts them at the top of the fairy hill just to keep the fairies happy. And do you know what? That's where fairy cakes came from. True story. Mm -hmm. And um, if you're ever in Scotland and you see this horrible creature or anything like her chasing you, just grab any kind of cake, throw it and <laughs> run in the opposite direction. And that's how to escape from fairies. Well done, Fizzy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. What are you taking about? Oh, oh, boy. <laughs> Aline, I have a question. I've never heard of fairy cakes before. Is that something traditional in Scotland or is it a type fairy of cake? Cakes, or what is it? Fairy cakes are just small cakes. Um, usually it's just a sponge. Sometimes, if children are going to make cakes at their grandmother's house, always fairy cakes just a sponge with icing on top sometimes you cut the top like off a cupcake? and give it wings yeah it's a cupcake. Like, like a cupcake oh, okay. very very basic cupcake yeah but much so. lighter than a cupcake light much okay. lighter yeah, much like a fluffy yeah. fluffy yeah. just what you make with the basics yeah um and uh, you're making me hungry. Yeah, my, my daughter likes to put icing on. You're, what making was that? Hungry. you're making us hungry. Sorry. <laughs> I do like stories about food. <laughs> so, um, I, I think our time is up. So, I, thank you very much, everyone, for joining. Um, for those of you watching on YouTube, I hope you all joined in at home and um, keep watching the videos at the World Storytelling Cafe. Um, there's two sets of stories minimum go up every day and um, they're doing a fantastic job. I'm going to remind you again about the hat. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, please go to the, the web page and have a look at all the different storytellers there. You'll find the storytellers hats and you can put in um, a couple of coins, whatever you can afford and um, that'll make Abby happy. There we are. And can I just add okay. that? Thank you. Can I add something? Pauline is very generously uh, donating her hat from today's performance to the storytellers in Morocco, the Café Clock storytellers. And um, just a couple of practical things to mention that in, in Morocco, there obviously isn't the social security system that there is in, in Northern Europe. So the money, and also money goes an awful long way over there. So um, if um, anybody does want to support them, then uh, that will be incredibly, incredibly appreciated. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Colin. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I've lost everyone. I'm just, just going to bring you back. There you are. <laughs> thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. So what happens now? Apparently we get to chat. We do we get to chat. I'd love to hear whatever, where everybody is. Yeah. I'm at a Rolling Stones concert, Mike. Oh, yeah. oh wow, I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Is that just for you? <laughs> I need to. I need to learn this technology of changing my background. Mike, are you in a in a street somewhere? Yeah. I, well, this is the. I'm in a street in Marrakesh, kind of. That's the real. Yeah. And this is where the actual physical Marrakesh storytelling cafe is going to be, and you can see kind of half finished building work. Uh, so yeah, that's what that's where I am. Great courtesy of the technology. Brilliant. Awesome. <clears throat> I'm in Colombia, of course. I, I I met to... Jean. Was that Juliana? In... Yes. Yes, in I'm in Colombia? Medellin, Colombia. Wow. Well. Excellent. Wow. What time is it in and Colombia? Then? One p.m. Almost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, Juliana, we see you next Sunday. 
We'll try. I, I have been having a little bit of trouble of the sound and the video freezing and pausing, cutting in and out, but we can try. We can try doing but, a lot. But you're looking really good now and you're sounding good now. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Brilliant. Fantastic. Oh, I do like that shield behind you. Yeah. Ah. The shield. We'd love to hear about the shield. Uh, well, I'm also from Scotland, but I'm a bit further south. Um, and I do Viking stories, so I was doing stories earlier on today, and it's just left over from then. But I'm also a Viking. <laughs> man, so I, I, I use that to fight. You're 900 years ahead of mine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I think my shield's over here. Hang on. Oh, cool. Shield comparison. Yeah. Well, mine has lots of knocks and bumps on it because it's been attacked by axes and spears. So, so is oh, mine. Oh, mine's we. We have the boar. The boar is one of our group emblems because we well, were supposed to do Pictish as well. I don't do Pictish, I just do Viking. You're, you're Glasgow Vikings, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. I know the Glasgow Vikings. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm an ex rhiny wifey. No. So. <laughs> Everyone else is like, what are they on about? <laughs> we're probably because we're both Scottish, we're probably talking really fast and they have no I idea what we're do. saying. Um, when I was telling the stories, I know I put in a few Scottish words. Did everybody understand okay? Yes. yes. I try and put in some translations, but Usually, I, you know, hopefully if I forget the translation, the context uh, comes through. I've done a lot of storytelling um, in Archeolink. There was a lot of tourists from around the world. So I kind of, I've developed three different accents. I've got my, my normal accent. I've got my very clean accent. And then I've got um, hanging out with other Scottish people accent, which is a bit unintelligible. <laughs> So tell me, with the, with the, the, Pauline, with the ballad, was that a, a regional dialect? Uh, yes, that's Doric. Um, Doric is Aberdeenshire. Um, so a lot of the words are farming and fishing, um, which is why a lot of it's been lost. But you've got, there, there's one called, um, oh, McFarlane of the Sprots of Burnie Boozy. I dunna like McFarlane, I'm fairly off a joke. I dunna like McFarlane or McFarlane's folk. And it's just... Carry on, <laughs> carry on. Don't, don't stop. Don't stop. <laughs> we want the whole thing. Words. It's got a pewter spoon was tinting McFarlane's moo, which is, um, he's got such a big mouth, you would lose a, a pewter spoon in it. His lugs would cast a shadow out of sack's foot gate. His ears are so big that um, they would overshadow a six foot gate. Um, there's so many amazing, beautiful um, Doric words. Uh, but my problem is that quite often I'll be having a conversation with someone and they just say, but what does that mean? Um, because I've just accepted it's the Queen's English and I don't know it's a Doric word. Um, so it's 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 a it's a dialect that's dying, but there are there's, there, they are teaching it in schools and stuff. Right, usually around about Burns night, it's like you've got Robert Burns, and then you've got Doric, but you've also got all the. Um, I know in Glasgow there's quite a lot of different um, dialects, and and Dundee's the same, and every, everywhere basically. So yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. So, Rika, are you are you joining us from Finland? Yes, yes. This is Finland. Yeah. Two hours later than you, so it's uh, about nine o'clock, I think. Yeah. Did, did you, how did you did you do okay yeah, with your Scottish dialect? Is that uh, is that close for you? Uh, or oh, I'm, I'm, I've been uh, working with uh, Highland cattle for over twenty years, so oh, I'm I'm used to. Uh, Look at this tremendous heifer! Hey, what the confirmation? <laughs> <laughs> That's not bad. Uh, can I can I share a secret? Highland cattle aren't from Scotland. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but they are, are beautiful. Where are they from? 
Well, somebody told me whether they were from the Netherlands. Um, I don't know. Yeah, not North Europe somewhere, I believe. Um, but everyone seems to associate them with Scotland now. I don't know why. <laughs> Well, I can give you a lecture about the history of Highland cattle if you are interested. But uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it will take three hours if I start talking about coos. Fantastic. <laughs> coos, brilliant. When I worked on um, tour buses, we used to take uh, it was mostly American tourists out to uh, a Highland coo farm nearby. And um, oh, it was brilliant. They got to the, brush the the cows, and and then probably on inappropriately, they got to taste the cows afterwards. <laughs> Not the same ones. Different <laughs> cows. <Brilliant. laughs> so they they were delicious. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. So where where is David? Right here. Can you, Can right, you hear are, me? Are you from? Yeah. Are you in the? I'm from Austin. Uh, no, no, I'm in Austin, Texas. I'm originally from the Appalachians, Great. and I'm sitting on a couch in my house. Fantastic. So where about, I had Austin, whereabouts in Austin is your house? It's one block, it's uh, two blocks south of the Rio Grande, another Rio Grande. It's two blocks south of the Colorado River. The Colorado River. It runs River right through. Austin. You know, it's, when, it's up just off of 35, Whoa. and uh, I-35, Interstate 35. Wow. Yeah. Excellent. So I had no problems with the Scottish dialect whatsoever since my father's side is from uh, northern uh, from Ulster. And uh, a lot of the a lot of the words were used. Yeah. I understood it totally. Yeah, the, the Irish and the Scots went back and forth so much. D Dave, did I hear you telling a story about the fiddler man last night? That was me. Yeah, that was me told in the accent and everything. I like and, that. Um, it's it's a pretty cool one. It's it's more fun when you're doing it in person because I get the whole body going, and I and my accent. This is this is how I usually talk. I don't talk like this all the time. But this is how I usually talk. And, uh, but I used to really get going, and I've had people on the edge of their seat when she grabs her child from the mirror. Yeah, and when the fiddler man arrives, and I've had children scream. I was, but anyway, that's my. Yeah, I was watching it in bed. My daughter was sleeping in with me last night, and I was watching it in bed with the volume turned down really low. <laughs> <In case people. laughs> <laughs> that was great. Oh, that was brilliant! It was brilliant, well, David. Thank you. Thank you. It was a brilliant set, David. I do think Gizmo stole the show slightly, though. Oh. Well, I'll have to talk to my friend Devana. That was her cat, as I said. I, I, I film over at her place. It's my housemate is working from home, and I don't want to interrupt his work. So I film over at her place. <laughs> there must be a, a, a place for cats of storytellers, because so many of the videos have got cats and coming in and out of them, and I'm well jealous. Uh, well. Oh, I must persuade my neighbour's cat to pass, pass by. Yeah. Okay. Let's borrow it. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Well, we can have, we can have pictures of us with our cats. The cat he was, on the website. Gizmo was such an attentive listener, that's the thing. He was really, um, you know, he or she was absolutely on it. He, he's absolutely precious. He's almost 20 years old. Wow. Beautiful. I think we should start a thread on the storytelling community page where everybody can show off their pets. All the storytellers can do I'm a with portrait yes. with their pet, and then we can put that onto the Definitely. community and can all share. I'll get I that done this week. Yulio needs a thread just, cool. just for himself. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. It, it's a long list. <laughs> Yeah, but it's a it was a beautiful donkey that you put up there the other day. Thank you. Yeah. We're still expecting the baby to come. We don't know exactly when, but uh, you know our farm is growing. We have two baby geese this morning, so. <laughs> Fantastic. That's good. Brilliant. And, and have you got? A, I know you're milking the goat. Have you still got the baby? Uh, yeah, we have two goats that we milk now. 
because we're always at home, so <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> we, need, we need more milk as usual. We've got honey here. The bees are going crazy. Uh, the first, the first flowers, the um, canola or rape uh, flowers, are in the field. So the fields are really bright and yellow, and the bees are going absolutely yellow. And, and your hay fever is going crazy if you put a full of rape seed around. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But I, I, feel, I feel for the hay, hay, hay fever sufferers. We've had a really, really bright weather in, England, in the south of England, and uh, so everything's uh, getting green very quickly, and uh, yeah, the bees are going wild. I, I have to go, everyone. See y'all later. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye, David. Bye. Bye. Bye, David. Good to see you. Bye, David. Take care, y'all. You too. <laughs> Give my love to Austin. I shall, God. <laughs> uh. So what's the weather like in Marrakesh, guys? So my I think, are you all muted? Hi guys, I said the weather is raining in Marrakesh today. Raining, oh that's very good. the Baraka. It's the first day of Ramadan. Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, um, everywhere is, um, as people in the country said, they told me that everything is, looks green and nice and clean and the river is, because nobody can move anywhere, so everything is clean at the moment. But it's lovely to have cooler weather on the first day of fasting too, isn't it? That's, that's yeah, yeah, it's, it's cold a bit today, yeah. And it's raining, as I said. Thank you so do you have another 20 minutes before if Ifta? Uh, not today. We have, we're fasting tomorrow. It's not today, Marrakesh. Uh, some, <laughs> people, okay. some people started already. Okay. <laughs> started yesterday. We, we, all, we always miss the day in Morocco, you know, it's like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> we, we, we thought that we are going to fast. They always we miss something. That, <laughs> yeah, it's like that. My. So we thought that we... Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, we're fasting tomorrow. Well, Inshallah. Ramadan Mubarak. Happy Ramadan. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thanks for pulling. It was good, you know. That was really nice. Thank yeah, you. I really enjoyed it too. Yeah. Ramadan Mubarak. Thank you so much. Right. Well, thanks Thank everyone for joining. Hi, Zohar. And thanks for staying to chat. Okay, thanks. Bye. Thank you, everybody, for making animal noises as well. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We, we love the experience. <laughs> Bye, Pauline. Thank you for the story. Thank you, Pauline. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye Sarah. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye, Abdu. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.